What's going on my fellow DC Universe and Marvel fans, GCDC here with another Let's Talk. Today we will be discussing the Grayson Features Inn. Grayson Features Inn was one of the first Features Inn one shots I've picked up. I picked up Grayson Features Inn pretty much because I've been reading the first two issues of the Grayson series. For those of you that don't know the whole point of Grayson, it's pretty much a story taking place after Dick Grayson aka Nightwing's identity was exposed to the entire world by the crime syndicate in Forever Evil series. Now he's showing his face and is now currently a spy. So that's why I picked up the Features Inn Grayson. Essentially all of the Features Inn one shots are the downfall of the hero or villain they are featuring. Especially me currently reading the actual Features End series, which is currently on issue number 21. I had to grab a couple of these one-shotters. The main one I couldn't wait for was the Features End Red Lanterns, since I believe the Red Lantern story to be the best comic series I've read, so far at least. I have yet to read it though. The big thing so far about these one-shotters is the motion cover versions. There's a 3D version and a 2D version. They are so much better than the motion covers of 2013, like when I picked up Cyborg Superman last year, and Black Adam, and Doomsday, and Darkseid. They were alright, they didn't really move whatsoever, probably like a centimeter. But this year, they changed fantastically. Now. The motion cover for Grayson, Grayson changes from his regular spy suit in a nice blue sky background to a Soviet hero great Grayson spy, kind of like a Red Sun Grayson. So I wasn't expecting, you know, 5 stars from this one shot, yet it kind of lifted you in a way that gets to you in an emotional way. Grayson starts off with the last moments of Dick's life. He is being hanged by his so-called girlfriend Helena and Soviet leaders. Each page you go through keeps taking you back into his past, whether it be hours, days, or even years. Pretty much everything that led to his last moments. Even some big important parts of his life. I'm not going to talk about every single flashback it goes through, however I will say something about a kind of a bunch of them. So after the last moments, it takes us back to when Dick and his girlfriend Helena were fighting what looks like some parademons and talking about their death. After that, we see about two pages of Dick and her talking to some Soviet leaders about teaming up to fight the demons. Yet the main thing Dick wants is to meet the president, but he keeps calling him the beast. I guess that's what they used to call him. And for some god-given reason, the leader they are talking to keeps sweating, has a worried face, and keeps wiping himself down with a rag. Because Dick insists that the president needs to give back territory he took over for the war. So maybe he's sweating because he knows that won't happen. Because of the president, so many homes were destroyed, children were turned to orphans from loss of parents' lives. And if you remember, Dick is also an orphan, so he feels sympathy for these children. As he holds the children, the song from his childhood during the Flying Graysons keeps playing in his head. He'd fly through the air with the greatest of ease, that daring young man on a flying trapeze. It's this president that caused Dick to be sentenced to death. Basically, Dick was supposed to help, and even though he did and succeeded and was, lo and was looked at as a hero, he killed the president in front of everybody, even the other Soviet leaders and his girlfriend Helena. So once he, be once he killed the president, and be he became a traitor in the Soviet's eyes. He even killed him in front of the soldiers. Going more into the past, we see a couple of times Dick and Helena, his girlfriend, saving each other. There's also a lot of times it shows them going down on each other, kind of showing us their sex life. I know, it's kind of weird. Spies always gets the ladies, kind of like James Bond, you know what I mean. Throughout the comic, we keep seeing Dick laughing, cracking himself up. What he's actually doing is thinking back into the past when he was figuring out Clue Master's codes. And every time Helena or someone would say something that it just happened to be a code from Clue Master, and he would start cracking up. Now, to the years in the past, we see when he first became a spy. This is the one of the pages going back more into the past when he first becomes a spy. Then, we also see him as Nightwing and jumping around rooftops with Batgirl. She even says that he will meet someone as dark as he is, as his good old pal Batman is in the future. So whenever he looks at Helena, he thinks back then when Batgirl was telling him that, when they were jumping off rooftops and crap like that. Then it goes back to him when he was Robin trying to master his detective's abilities by figuring out Clue Master's codes with Batman. That's why we see him earlier in the comic laughing to himself about the codes. Going even further back, it shows him trying on the Robin suit, and he asks why he can't wear something dark like Batman. Then Batman hits his ass with that Socrates crap, talking like, they must see you when you beat them first. 
then you must earn the knife. Now going even further into the past, it shows Dick as a teenager holding the acid his parents were killed with. When I say that, I don't mean somebody threw acid on them. I mean the acid that was put on their ropes to make them go from the flying Graysons to the falling Graysons. Now to go back the most it for us, it flashes us back to Dick and his parents the day they were killed by showing us the burning rope that led to their death while we hear the song again. He flies through the air with the greatest of ease, that daring young man on a flying trapeze. So that's why he kept hearing it. It shows us in earlier in the comic, it flashing back to the song, and he keeps hearing the song in his head, and now we know why, because he keeps thinking about the day that his parents died. So after reading the whole entire comic, I took the time to go from the last page and flip back to the front page one by one. I didn't read, I just looked at the artwork in the pictures one last time and watched his life in a matter of pages. And it kinda hit me with this sadness. It's not like I cried, but it had me feeling some type of way. I definitely recommend Grace and Future's End because it's a good short story. And the reason why I flipped back to the page was because I thought of this, how it's taking us from the front page and then all the way to the last page going back into his past. Then, you can kind of not, you don't even have to read the dialogue. All you have to do is go from the back and then go one by one page back to the front. And instead of going back into his life, you kind of get this glimpse of every single stage leading up to his death. So it was kind of cool to do that. And if you do pick it up, do what I did. Which is read, yeah, from the beginning to the end and just gaze upon the pictures from end back to the beginning. And I'm sure you will feel the same way. That's if you guys have a soul. Well guys, thanks for watching another Let's Talk. Tune in next time for another Future Zen one shot. I'm probably going to do Supergirl Future Zen next time because I'm really hyped up for it. Only because the motion cover goes from Supergirl by herself. Then she happens to turn into Cyborg Supergirl. And they've never had a Cyborg Supergirl, only a Cyborg Superman. So I'm really excited for that. So I'll see you soon. Later, dudes.